We have our main entrance off of Gilgir Lane into an 80 car parking lot here. And from there, visitors can access the lake through the trail, gravel trail down to the lakefront or go and use the grass trail. There's a second secondary entrance up here at the cemetery with a parking lot, 20 car parking lot there now. There is the Lake Michigan Trail. So there, we used to call this the Lake Michigan Trail, but now with the Lake Michigan Water Trail, we're kind of going to be referring to that as the Hutchinson Ravine Trail. And that was put in, it provides continuous accessible access from Sheridan Road and the McClurry Path all the way through its asphalt to the shoreline and the bluff. We have um, the grass trail, mowed grass trail that's used extensively. Uh, and it's about 1.6 miles, I believe, right now. We have a wood chip path right here, this section here. And that is um, currently causing some issues with maintenance. It floods, it washes out. Uh, my staff is constantly in there. It's ongoing. Um, the actual 80 car parking lot, there's some problems with that. And the fact that it's a cut through. We have the existing residents down there on the waterfront there. And they have to actually maneuver right through the parking, the public parking lot. We also have problems with um, visitors coming all the way over to the private gate that they have there and then having to back around and turn out. So there's some circulation issues there as well. And then also pedestrian circulation problems with the parking lot the way it is now too because they, instead of using the gravel trail, they walk right down the road. And we've had a couple of complaints that the gate has been <coughs> uh, broken. It's an electronic gate that they have there. And so there's some issues with just the location of that parking lot right now. The parade ground itself is mowed from curb to curb right now. And we've had discussions with the Homeowners Association and we've gotten approval actually from this committee to incorporate the plant, what you see over there on the plant. Um, the actual trail itself is only about halfway around the, right now it's an asphalt path. And then there are 12 those pink asterisks, there are 12 existing exhibits that interpret the history of the uh, military as well as the natural history of the site. For, you know, there was an old uh, George Bell Drive that, right here, and we always left that in place, so it's probably, you know, maybe 300 feet, 400 feet long and pretty wide, and it was the old access to the cemetery. And we left that in because we knew that we may be needing that potentially the future when we finish the master plan. So that's in place yet today. We also have um, the lighter area there is in grassland primarily right now. And then the bluff itself, we mentioned that there's some erosion issues along there. And also our beach itself has been declining. You can start to see that over time. It's really narrow now. It, it wasn't that late 10 years ago. So that's the existing conditions. Um, I'd like to go over the both concepts now, and they are almost exactly the same, the same, with the exception of the parking, the entrance locations, and also the uh, restrooms. So concept A, um, we we'll start out with the habitat restoration and the woodland uh, savanna restoration. The woodland savanna restoration is shown in that dark uh, brown area there. We're taking out two-thirds of the parade ground uh, turf area and putting that into restored areas. Uh, we've also taken, and since November, the three acres of woodland restoration north of Hutchinson Ravine. We've listened to the comments we received, and we removed 13 acres. So now we have 50, or 50 acres total. The, the 13 acres we removed are right in this eastern part here, as is. Uh, shown in the lighter areas there on the central plateau. Again, this preserves that view to Lake Michigan. And it also addresses some of those concerns that we heard in November regarding um, setting aside some grassland areas for grassland birds. The Glyphor project, we've talked quite a bit about that. And that's, again, that restoration work with the Army Corps of Engineers. And that includes restoration of Hutchinson Ravine and James Ravine enhancements of parts of that. 
It also includes restoration of the block and repairs of the eroded areas I mentioned. It also includes placement of inlaid stone um, structures that will help to enhance the fish habitat in the dunes areas and also protect the toe of that block slope there. Other parts of the project include planting native plants, shrubs, and trees, and also controlling invasive species, and also removing there's some existing steel piers down there and some concrete rubble. Also, we really would like to look at this north part, north of Hutchinson, as a really an area of important birding. And there's a possibility that through the National Audubon Society, we can get this designated as an important birding area. And it's an easy process with no restrictions on how we manage the property. And the district ha um, has already had, we already had two of those at Ryerson Woods and at Rollins Savannah. And this would bring potentially national attention to the value of this area. The trails, um, we have the existing North Loop Trail, which is a turf trail that will remain there. It's 1.65 miles. And this will help to deter bicycles from that area. It is the preferred trail surface for birding, from what we've heard. Um, there's also an aging bridge up here, the steel bridge over a tank for me, and that will be um, reconstructed with a seating area for viewing out over the ravine and the treetops. There will be two existing culverts over the diversion channel. Remember way back we removed the water from the two ravines to this overland flow. And so we just put in temporary culverts. So they're actually a dip down and we'd like to make it a little bit more accessible. So bridge, bridge or boardwalk, bridges or boardwalks will be installed there. The Hutchinson Ravine Trail will remain put in the present location. Uh, it is an asphalt surface and provides a continuous accessible route, again, from Sheridan Road to the lake. And um, we will be converting the existing woodshed path that we talked about into asphalt. And as part of that, there will be two bridges that will be put in to improve the accessibility, one there and one there. And that in doing so, this will create a central smaller half mile asphalt loop there. Um, there'll be two new timber bridges. I just mentioned, okay, okay. And then the parade ground. The parade ground itself, um, we'll, we'll complete that loop. You know, we talked about it being about halfway around. So that'll be an asphalt loop to circle the entire parade ground. There'll also be a, a small little spur trail asphalt to access an exhibit area right there. The interpretive exhibits will be um, combined in some areas. There's 12 of them I mentioned before. What we'd like to do is take these two and combine those into one location there and a seating area. This gets the seating area out in the open, more viewable to the historic buildings over there as well as the historic uh, parade grounds. The other one is we're Two existing exhibits over here. One interprets the landing strip for the military uh, airfield and also a natural history um, exhibit. Those will be combined into more of a platform area, an observation area that can be used by birders, both um, grassland birders and also the hawk watch. Um, now I'll focus on the differences between the two concepts. Um, Concept A, the main entrance to the preserve will be removed from Gilgary Lake. It will be put over here on George Bell. It will occupy about half of the existing infrastructure we talked about and then wind its way into a location here next to the hawk's nest. This area here is very centrally located. You can access many things from there, many activities. You can access the historic parade ground and the exhibits there, the hawk's nest. You can access the Hutchinson Ravine Trail all the way down to the bluff. And you can access the um, Grass Loop Trail. It's centrally located. It does not, it removes traffic from maneuvering through the neighborhood so that it basically it's easy to find. If this were to overflow, traffic can be directed over to a potential overflow parking that we're still working on 
with the Pinewood and the City of Pinewood Park, excuse me, the City of Pinewood Forest. There, what we're proposing is a 40 car parking lot there. Um, and then over at Gildare, this would be closed to the public. There would be a new gate put in there that will be used by the private residents. It'll have to be an electronic gate. And we'll also designate maybe four or five spots for permit parking only near this observation platform location. And it will be used for research only, research and uh, about analysis that may be, may be going on for a bird. They'll have to have a permit and they'll get, if that happens, they'll get a key or they'll get the combination to the touch pad. Um, there'll be a restroom, up in the back of your toilet restroom at that parking lot, and then up here at the cemetery, there'll be a back of your toilet there as well. Currently, we operate, I think there's two porta potties at the existing lot there, and one up at the cemetery. So this would be more of a permanent solution to that. Um, how many parking spaces is there farther to the north? There's 20 existing right now. Mm -hmm. So we would go on this concept, there's 80 cars here now and 20 here now. So it's 100 total. We would go from 100 to 40 and 20, so 60 in this concept. It's a great segue as you move over to concept. With, with the potential we can talks. for, you can expand potentially the cemetery if we need to, and also put some like, overflow parking down here as well. So yeah, make sure you mentioned that on concept. So concept B, um, the main entrance will remain at Gil Garrett like it is today. Uh, we'll do a little reconfiguring with that drive to solve some of those circulation issues that I mentioned. It will also give us an opportunity to tuck the parking behind some existing trees here so that when you're out in using the preserve, you don't see the cars sticking out there. Uh, so that'll be a 20 car parking lot. So we'll go from 80 to 20. There'll be an evaporator uh, toilet rest in there. The, drive itself would be reconfigured so that people aren't driving down and having to back out with the private gate. Signage will have to be put in there. We will still have the observation platform there. And that observation platform is not just for burning, it can be used by anyone to demo. Down here at George Bell, we did some sketches and we can get in 10 cars without hardly any increase in infrastructure there and a bus parking area. There's a small, one stall for a small tour bus, or could be a school bus there for programs. Over here at the cemetery parking lot, again, we mentioned there's a 20 cars there now. We would add 18, so there'd be 38. So between those three parking lots and this concept, we would get 68 cars total. Again, with the opportunity to potentially work through and get additional parking availability the highway, the city highway, and the city of Canada. 